Hey guys, welcome to Data Packs of the Month. In this video, we're going to cover data packs that were released in July 2022. This series will cover data packs that are functional on the latest versions of Minecraft, but that doesn't mean they won't work on older versions either. You can find the links to all the data packs I'm about to showcase in the description below. First up, we have Structury. It adds some new structures to your world, with all of them currently being in the overworld. There's boats, fire lookout towers, outcast villager houses, as well as lots of different ruins. They all fit seamlessly into your world, and these structures definitely feel like they would blend in nicely into vanilla Minecraft. The developers have some big plans for the pack, with potential lore-themed locations and other add-ons coming in the future. It's also compatible with Terralith, which is a great world generation data pack. With this data pack, you'll find an expansion to Minecraft's combat equipment. There's eight new craftable items, which include a mace, warhammer, sickle, greatsword, halberd, bomb, longbow, and shield. When fighting enemies with these items, you can apply special effects like shattered, which can lower their armor, or disorientation, which reduces the speed of your opponents. Alongside these craftable items are three other weapons, which can only be obtained through treasure, and these are the Lance, Partisan, and Musket. A pack that should help with gaming materials is Larger Ore Veins. As the name suggests, ores like iron, gold, copper, and coal will generate in much larger veins. However, the spawn rate of these ores has also been slightly reduced, so that the data pack isn't too overpowered. It seems that the developer also has some other packs on their profile, which can do the same thing for the likes of diamonds and ancient debris. Better Villages, which I've talked about in its mod form, has been turned into a data pack. Currently, it changes the plains, snowy, and desert villages, with updates to the Savannah and Taiga villages coming in a potential future update. At these locations, you'll find that villages are much larger and feature more buildings. Instead of being simple structures, houses and other profession-style buildings will have a lot more detail. Hopefully, it will feel like you've actually entered a large town instead of a small community. Lots of other newer buildings are also added, and I especially like the life that's been added to desert villages. Although I do tend to feel lag with this pack sometimes, which I think might be a result of the particles coming from the chimneys. Another data pack to add new explorable locations is Red's More Structures. It includes the tower, beach house, abandoned house, Buddha statues, ice oracle, flower oracle, Dark Tower, Great Pyramid, and Jungle Pyramid. Most of these structures are going to contain a chest or barrel containing loot, and some will have beds too, so you can have a place to rest. If you head to the Dark Tower, then you'll find some hostile creatures like witches, vindicators, and pillagers guarding it. And it's possible that some more structures will be added in future versions. In Minecraft, the forests are pretty small and repetitive, so a developer of Planet Minecraft has created this pack, Overgrown Overworld, to adjust the scale and density of trees and other foliage. Multiple biomes have been changed, including the Dark Oak Forest, Jungle, Birch Forest, Savannah, and a few others. You might find trees that are huge or some that are in their early growth stages. There's also bushes, boulders, and more grass to be found. Using a chest and an assortment of other blocks, you'll be able to create huts after installing this data pack. Huts can be spawned which contain witches, villagers, blazes, piglins, shulkers, and more. But what's also in these huts are lots of loot, like blaze rods, ender pearls, and even an elytra. Obviously, this mod is quite overpowered as you can even summon a hut made of diamond blocks. And there's a chest inside which contains netherite equipment, which is enchanted at a level of 255. So a lot of you might want to avoid this pack for immersion reasons. This next data pack adds an XP reward system into Minecraft, so that there's more methods of gaining experience without solely killing mobs or mining resources. Now you can earn XP by chopping wood, digging up blocks, farming, mining, and even traveling by boat. The XP rates are quite good too, and it's well balanced, as you'll only gain experience when using the correct tool types. Just a reminder, this is for earning regular Minecraft experience, which can be used for the likes of enchanting. For some more in-game locations, you might want to try out crab structures. What's cool about this pack is that structures are generated as new chunks are discovered, 
so using a command, you can control just how often structures should spawn in each location, whether it be in caves, skies, the nether, or the end. There's over 50 different structures included, which includes various towers, floating islands, houses, forts, and a lot more. You'll often find structures which are filled with hostile mobs and some chests, too. Vanilla Refresh aims to add content that should exist in vanilla Minecraft, like a day counter and subtitle display when entering a new biome. Now you can look down, sneak, and right-click to summon a seat, allowing you to sit wherever you'd like. When going down a ladder, you can hold more ladders and sneak to deploy them as a drop ladder. Look up at a mob, and you can see its health displayed above the hotbar. You're going to be able to equip banners onto your character too. There's so many useful features, some which need to be manually enabled, but it's definitely worth checking out. Included with the Africa Mob Data Pack is six new animals. These are the elephant, lion, meerkat, gerboa, ostrich, and camel. They can be found naturally spawning in some biomes, but there's spawn eggs available too. They have their own custom animations, models, and sounds, and the developer did a great job. The latest addition is the camel, and these can be equipped with a saddle, allowing you to ride and control them, although there are some limitations when it comes to data packs. Ships on Seas, known as SOS, will add ships to Minecraft's oceans. Some of these will contain villagers who can be traded with, while there's others that will be run by pirate pillagers or just abandoned with the likes of spiders and zombies. On most of these ships, you can find chests containing loot. Occasionally, you might even come across wreckage in the ocean. This data pack also includes some lighthouses, which can spawn in the plains and desert biomes, which also might be occupied. From the same developer comes this data pack, which adds flying villages instead. As you can see, these are huge in size and feature lots of structures you'd find in regular villages, like churches, houses, and farms. Getting between these islands can be dangerous, as you might fall down a few dozen blocks to the surface below. There's supposedly a rare chance of finding one of these villages that are controlled by pillagers too, but I haven't discovered one yet. This pack is going to add some guns into Minecraft. Included with the data pack is a sniper, pistol, bazooka, and submachine gun. Each of them have their own ammunition types, and all the items provided by the pack have crafting recipes too. As you can see, the models and animations for the weapons are great, and they make some pretty useful weapons for clearing out mobs. One chest is a challenge type data pack. After enabling it, you'll spawn on a single chest, which is floating in nothingness. Inside the chest are some random items, which will help you survive. They might be helpful, or they might just be useless. Each day, the contents of the chest will refresh, and you'll get more items. Your goal is to survive, reach the nether and end, and eventually beat the game. So if you think you're up for a challenge, you might like this pack. For an RPG-style world, especially one related to Zelda, you might want this data pack. It adds the ruined guardians from Zelda into Minecraft, they're just simple structures, but it would go well with mods like Towers of the Wild and Paragliders. There are a few different sizes and styles to the Guardians, with you having a chance of collecting some ancient debris from them too. The TNT Lobber can be crafted by throwing 10 gunpowder, 3 TNT, and a fishing rod on the ground. It's a TNT launcher and doesn't require any ammunition to use. The TNT also explodes a bit slower than regular TNT and there is some physics behind it as it's able to bounce off blocks. If a TNT bounces off a slime block, then it will bounce with more power, whereas a honey block will reduce the bounce instead. If you want to do a boss fight, then you can summon the Drowned King by combining four lapis and a gold ingot to get King Bait. When you fish with this item in your offhand slot, you'll summon the Drowned King. It's a boss, and during the fight, it will be able to do some interesting attacks and summon totems to empower it. I'd recommend bringing a shield as you're going to get hit by a trident a lot. And definitely don't fight in water like I am. After defeating the Drowned King, you'll receive his trident, which has some nice enchantments, including multi-shot. If you're a fan of the Thor movies, then you're going to love this data pack. Using commands, you'll be able to give yourself some of Thor's iconic weapons, like his hammer or Stormbreaker and Thunderbolt. When using Thor's hammer, it has lots of abilities. You can throw it by right-clicking, and it will fly in the direction you're facing and hit any nearby mobs. 
Then you can bring it back towards you. If you press Q while the hammer is mid-air, then it will summon a bolt of lightning. If you have the cracked version of the hammer, then you can split it up into multiple pieces, and then it will come back together. If it's in your offhand slot and you hold the right mouse button, the hammer will spin, repelling any nearby mobs and then allow you to fly. And the other weapons are just as cool. This data pack had so much work put into it, as all the sounds and particle effects just integrate perfectly, and I definitely recommend checking it out, even just for fun. Bucketable is a simple data pack, but probably quite useful. In Minecraft, you'll now be able to place every creature inside a bucket, allowing you to transport it around. You can even bucket the likes of the Wither and Ender Dragon. That's 20 of the best data packs released in July 2022. I hope you liked this video and found some content for your worlds. If you did enjoy the video, then consider subscribing and check out my channel as I've covered many more videos like this.